IBM for sponsoring this video. So today we have a few meetings. We are going to a requirements meeting. So what it's gonna to take to scale this particular service there are already a couple bullet points of what we need to do, but this is where we walk through them and actually discuss, is this feasible? How would we do this? Get down to the nitty gritty, and then someone will pick up the task and do it. Then later on, we have a meeting with some other engineers. There are a couple things you really only do once, like once every two years or once every three years. And a lot of that has to do with infrastructure. So something like buying a domain name or getting an SSL cert or setting the configurations for a particular queue or for a Lambda function or for the server that your code is running on. You kind of set it once and then you don't touch it. You don't access it or change it ever again. And this, this happens to be one of those times, and so I did it last time for when we were spinning up some new services, so I'm gonna walk through how to do it with some other engineers so that they can do it too. And it's interesting because as software engineers, most of our job is automation. We're automating a specific task or automating the way data is retrieved or some calculation that's made from the data, but our jobs, are pretty manual. There are definitely things that we automate within the job, but we have to work. And that's because a lot of software engineering is problem solving, and so you have to have discussions in order to solve the problem at hand. Then when you automate it, you're actually automating all the different processes that you've made a decision about. So you've decided this is the way we're gonna process this data or this is the configuration I'm gonna have on my server. These are decisions that you're making based on your prior experience or your approach to solving the problem. So for infrastructure, once you've figured out what all your configurations are gonna be, the automation part is the actual setting of those configurations. Now there was a time when setting those configurations was manual. You had some person that was in a data warehouse and they had to manually set up a box or set up your server to the exact configurations you wanted. Now we can do all of that through a portal. It's still not 100% automated because those decisions require human input. Maybe in the future they won't, but there's a lot of thoughtfulness that goes into those configurations and that's why the human input is needed. And it's the same thing for those requirements. There's a lot of thought that goes into what about this use case or what if we did this instead of this or what happens if this situation occurs. And typically what you wanna do is automate everything else so that you can focus on these important discussions, the important discussions of requirements, of use cases, of architecture, of design. Then once you have your main idea, your main, the main thing you wanna build, the thing that's actually going to make things faster or calculate something that hasn't been calculated before or some whatever your big idea is, once you have it, you wanna to try to automate everything else so you can focus on that thing rather than how to configure the server box in a data center 500 miles away. But for now, we're gonna get into those meetings and get into those discussions. All right, so we have the requirements, we're ready to go. And this particular project has to do with sending a notification. And there are a lot of different components that can be talked about in just that simple process. How long is it between when an event occurs and when we can send the notification? What's in the notification? What language is it in? How do we know that? Will it be capable with the given app the user has downloaded? If it's a super old version, will the app crash? And this is where the combination of front end and back end, this is where they start to work together. Whatever the back end or the platform team creates, the front end team has to be able to render. So once we have all of these product requirement type questions answered, we can start building it. 
and we could take forever to build it if we don't use any automation whatsoever but there's actually a lot of tools we can use in order to automate some of the building processes so we can focus on what really matters. A couple of these include code as infrastructure, and so this is a template that you might give to Azure or to IBM Cloud or AWS or Google Cloud. You'll give it to one of these cloud providers and it'll render it and build the infrastructure you want to build. All you have to do is have the configuration file and they go find the servers, they go find the resources and set up what you've defined in this configuration file. So the infrastructure is code. It's really configuration, but it's simply a file you would give and they go build it for you. Easy. Of course, like we talked about before, what goes into that configuration file requires thoughtfulness. It requires you to really think, okay, how many servers do I need to have? What machines should they be? What are the dependencies of my application? How am I going to get analytics? How am I going to get logs? How is that all going to be visible so that I can troubleshoot my application? Another process we automate is CICD. So this is continuous integration or continuous deployment and it has to do with getting the code from github or wherever it is in the world and maybe it's even your local computer but getting it to the servers to the infrastructure that's hosting your application and so that's the initial deployment potentially and every deployment after that. So every time you make a change or a series of changes, getting that to your servers. And so the CICD, it might build your application and so build a Docker file or build something so it's easier to pass and run on these other computers, the ones that are in the cloud. It might be testing your code. And so making sure any tests you've written that verify your application's functionality, that it all works. And those are automated as well. You don't want to test every single feature of your application every single time you make an update. You want that automated. And so that also allows you to focus on what you're building, how you're building it, versus these tedious little tasks of getting the code from wherever it lives to the cloud. And you wanna get it to the cloud so that it can be accessible to other people, not just you on your laptop. So really what automation allows you to do is it allows you to scale. If I was focusing all my time on testing or all my time on getting the code to the cloud or building the infrastructure and sitting in some data center putting the wires together, I wouldn't be able to focus on the big application or the big idea that I want to build. I would be caught up in the repetitive, the tedious, versus focusing my attention on the thing I'm passionate about. And that brings us to our sponsor, IBM. With CloudPack Business Automation and CloudPack AIOPs, you can automate systems and processes at scale. You can automate expense reports, automate onboarding processes. So let's automate so we can create more together. You can learn more down in the description. So really automation is about return on investment. If I automate my expense reports or if I automate my infrastructure setup or if I automate my testing and my CICD and various parts of my creation process, I can actually focus more on the creation. And that's because creativity is not something you can automate. You need to be thoughtful about what you're automating because if you automate it incorrectly or you set up this process and maybe it causes a bunch of bugs or it doesn't really work as you expect it, it can cause more problems than it solves. And maybe it wasn't even worth automating in the process. The goal of automation is so you can focus on what you want to do. It propels you forward so you can keep reaching for the next big thing and not get caught up in the stuff you don't want to do. So whether that's things that are repetitive, maybe they take a while to do manually, or they're just annoying, it's definitely worth it to take a look at your workflow and see what processes require more thought and how can you take the processes that require less thought and automate them. Now in automation, you do take some risks. 
There's the risk of security. If you automate something and it's doing the testing, it's deploying the code, it's checking the dashboards or giving you alerts when your service is down or receiving less requests or whatever it is, you're trusting that thing to do its task. And so there is a little bit of security involved. Like, do you trust it to deploy your code correctly? Do you trust it to catch all of your bugs? And you can trust it to a certain point, but there is a point where maybe you have to come in and review the process and make sure it's automating exactly what you want it to automate and it's doing that correctly. I think people get excited to automate everything. They want to automate everything they can, but some processes are valuable as manual. So whether that's learning something new or education, you're not going to automate that. It takes time to understand and to get good at something. And that's where you should be spending your time, not on the tedious stuff you don't want to do. You might be able to automate certain components of your learning process. So that could be the retrieval of various documents, hiring a teacher or a coach to help you get better faster. Maybe they come up with the lesson plans and you can just sit and focus on learning. And it's because that some processes are valuable as manual that automation is not going to take over the world. Sure, there will be jobs that are not jobs anymore, but new jobs are created. There's always going to be some manual process in the automated process. There will be some thought driven thing that needs to happen, whether it's the requirements building or deciding what configurations to put on the infrastructure or what parameters to give a, a task. And so people will always be needed. The job itself will just change. And it'll change so that we can work on bigger and better things and advanced technology. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you IBM for sponsoring. I'll see you next time and happy coding.